today we're going to look at a pretty interesting incorrect proof of perhaps one of the most famous theorems of modern times, and that's Fermat's last theorem. So let's recall what it says real quick. It says for all x, y, z, and n, which are natural numbers, where n is bigger than or equal to 3, we have x to the n plus y to the n is not equal to z to the n. So in other words, there are no solutions to this object right here if we replace this with an equal sign. Of course, what makes this interesting is that it's so easy to state and the case when n is equal to 2 gives us an infinite family of solutions, the Pythagorean triples. Now, I'd like to point out that this incorrect proof comes from a blog that I found. Well, originally from a Russian article, but the blog is fermazlasttheorem.blogspot.com. It's got a lot of interesting stuff related to Fermat's last theorem. Maybe before we jump into the proof, let's point out, or the proof I should say, let's point out that the actual proof done by Andrew Wiles took hundreds of pages. And in fact, what he did was prove something called the Taniyama Shimura conjecture, which was related to modular forms and elliptic curves. And Fermat's last theorem just happened to be a nice corollary of that. And actually, in fact, the mathematics that led to this final proof of Fermat's last theorem was quite revolutionary. And there's been a lot of work in algebraic geometry built off of that mathematics. So that's really just an interesting case of a historical problem like Fermat's last theorem inspiring new cutting edge math. Okay, so anyway, let's get into our incorrect proof. Okay, so we're going to start by working towards a contradiction. So in other words, we will suppose that we have numbers x, y, z, and n, which are natural, n is bigger than or equal to 3, such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n. Okay, great. Now let's see where we go wrong. Well, of course we're gonna produce a contradiction, but it won't be a real contradiction. And that's because we most definitely cannot fit the proof of Fermat's last theorem on this chalkboard. Okay, so now from here what we'll do is define a new number r, and this number r is a real number. So let's do that. So let's define r, a real number, such that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So it like completes a right triangle where x and y are the sides of the right triangle. Okay, so let's get a picture of that going on. So here we've got our right triangle. So our hypotenuse is r. Maybe we'll say this side is x and this side is y. And then this is our right angle over here. Okay, nice. So now from here, we're going to do a little bit of an inequality. So since n is bigger than or equal to 3, we know that x to the n is bigger than x squared, and y to the n is bigger than y squared. You might say, well, what about bigger than or equal to, because x and y could both be equal to 1, but you can maybe pretty quickly check that x and y are not allowed to be equal to 1, or they're at least not both allowed to be equal to 1. Okay, but now let's see where that takes us. So that means we have r to the n, which is r squared to the power n over two, can be written as x squared plus y squared, all to the power n over two. But now this object is going to be bigger than or equal to x to the n plus y to the n. Because if you were to expand this binomial, you would most definitely get an x to the n and a y to the n term, but you would get a lot of other terms too. And all of those other terms are bigger than zero. So when we remove all of those terms, we get this inequality. And here I might as well make this like some sort of strict inequality. Okay, so that's good. But now let's recall that x to the n plus y to the n is z to the n by our assumption, which is working towards a contradiction. So let's see what this gives us, focusing on 
this extreme left hand side r to the n is bigger than this extreme right hand side z to the n. So that means that r is bigger than z. Okay, so that's an important takeaway at the moment. Okay, so now from here we're gonna go up to this triangle and we're gonna shorten the hypotenuse. Well, no longer will it be a hypotenuse because if we shorten this side right here, this angle will decrease. So just to reiterate, we're leaving y and x the same length and we're shortening this r. So let's shorten r until it coincides with the number z. We can do that because r is bigger than z. We just showed that. Okay, so that's gonna give us something like this. So let's see, we have, this is our side X, this is our side Y, and then this is our side Z. Now this angle right here, which was a right angle, is now not a right angle, it's an acute angle. It looks like we picked up a right angle here, but that's just by how this drawing happened. So I'll call this angle theta. And let's notice that this angle theta is between zero and 90 degrees, but I'll use radians here. So theta is on the open interval from zero to pi over two radians. Okay, so from here, we'll apply the law of cosines to this second shortened triangle. So applying the law of cosines to this shortened triangle gives us something like this. We have z squared equals x squared plus y squared minus two times x times y times cosine theta. So I won't derive the law of cosines. I think we'll just take that as a fact right now. But now let's solve this for cosine theta. So we can pretty easily solve this for cosine theta and we get the following object. We'll have cosine theta is equal to one over two x. So x and y are both positive, so it's okay to divide by them. And then after that, we'll have x squared plus y squared minus z squared. And this is where the author tells us that we found a contradiction. So notice what we have built is a value of cosine which is rational. That's because this is a rational combination of integers. So just to like say, we've ended up with cosine of theta is a rational number. And the author says that this is a contradiction, but of course it's not a contradiction because cosine is allowed to be rational for sure. So in fact, cosine of pi over six is equal to one half, and that's a rational number. You could imagine that the angle of pi over six would make this work. And so you might try to patch this and say, well, let's say cosine is not allowed to be a half. Cosine of pi over six is not allowed to be a half. And that would bring us to some sort of quadratic Diophantine equation here that we would show has no solutions. I think it probably doesn't have no solutions, but let's say we did show that it has no solutions. Well, then we could just like further argue more and notice that by the intermediate value theorem for all, let's see, rational numbers, which I'll call A over B between zero and one, there exists something I'll call theta zero between zero and pi over two, such that cosine of theta zero equals A over B. And that's because cosine is a continuous function. So just to reiterate here, the author claimed that the contradiction occurred right here, where he said that cosine of theta was a rational number. But clearly that's not a contradiction because cosine is allowed to be a rational number. So that maybe brings me to my larger question. So this article was in Russian and on the blog, it wasn't really translated completely, just the proof was translated. Furthermore, I didn't translate it either. So perhaps this was an example of a wrong proof given in this Russian article, or maybe they thought they actually had a proof. Either way, I think this is an interesting argument and it's interesting to see where it falls apart. And that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.